Hey guys, what's up? Well, had a little destruction on my sand rail. I think you guys saw that maybe on the last video. And today is the day that I get to build the motor, <clears throat> or at least start building the motor. Got all the parts gathered up. Um, it's nice to have friends in the industry help you out a little bit. I know a guy at a machine shop that hooked me up and uh, got all the parts that I needed. So talk a little bit about what I'm doing and um, the difference between the LS1 that I had and then the 5.3 that I'm going to use. So check this little mess out. All right, so here's the uh, new engine that I'm going to be using, 5.3 Gen 4, which is a um, was it 07 to 10, I think, on Tahoes and Yukons and all kinds of stuff they put this motor in, but it's no big deal. These things are all the same. So a little bit of carnage still laying around. I got junk everywhere. It's such a mess right now. Got crap over here, crap over here, all kind of crap up in there. And I got some more stuff over here. They're just stuff scattered everywhere. So got the block all cleaned up. So like I said, I'm going to start doing some measurements on there. So I got to give it props to GM, man. Those guys are just amazing how they think of all the stuff that they think about when they build these motors. So obviously everybody's heard of an LS1, right? LS1 was in the Camaros and Corvettes and stuff uh, back in, I think, 97 is when they started. And that completely changed the industry as far as the small blocks go. I mean, the Chevrolet small block has been around since the 50s. And that was an amazing engine. There's still tons of them out there making lots of horsepower and having a lot of fun. But obviously GM needed a change, keep up with the times, and then they came up with their LS1 series. Uh, aluminum block, aluminum heads is the LS. So LS1 is actually an RPO code. RPO is regular production options. And that's just the number that they gave the uh, that particular engine. So there used to be an LT1, which was GM uh, small block Chevy iron block. And now the new LT1 is actually the 6.2 liter GM aluminum block. So they, they just throw these numbers around. Um, these are just RPO codes. So they don't really mean anything. So LS1 is obviously uh, something that everybody can recognize. They call everything an LS1 nowadays. Technically it's not, but who cares? It's no big deal. It's the same platform. Just like VTEC. VTEC made Hondas very popular and stuff, but that's you know, it's just an operating system that they use. So the LS1, it's the daddy that started them all. LS2, LS3, LS4, LS6, LS7s. Those are all RPO codes for different engines. So this particular engine that I have is a um, LC9, I think is the RPO code. It's just a basic truck motor. It's really nothing special other than the fact that it's aluminum. And let me check this out. Boop. All right. So as you can see, aluminum block and 5.3 liter instead of the iron block 5.3 liters. Iron block 5.3, there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. It's just a little bit heavier. So going in my dune buggy, I wanted something uh, relatively light and kind of close to the LS1 that I was using. So 5.3 liter converted over is approximately four or 327, and then the 5.7 is 350. So they've stuck with those sizes from the old school, old days when they had the 283s, the 327. So this motor is a tiny bit smaller few cubic inches, a couple of, of liters smaller, or actually 0.4 liters smaller, but that's not going to be a problem. Should run amazing. So one thing that, well actually several things, but some of the killer points that GM has done is all of these engines, everything interchanges. It's just so cool. The heads interchange, the front covers, the crank, I mean, it's the same crank for the 5.3, 6 O's. It's all the same crank. And I found something very interesting on the old interweb. I was looking some stuff up. Um, kind of worried about my balancing because I have a 6.0 liter crankshaft. 
and 6.0 liter rods with the 5.3 liter piston. And I was worried about the balancing. Well, I looked it up on uh, YouTube, and this guy did a study on that, and it turns out that they made the bob weight all the same. So bob weight is how much reciprocating weight you have spinning around. So this whole assembly right here, this entire thing would be uh, weighed out. Basically, the piston, the pin, the rings would be weighed out. And when you balance an engine, you balance the big end, you balance the small end, then you balance all the pistons. You make everything weigh the same. And then that um, gets put on the crankshaft as a bob weight. The crankshaft gets spun, and they um, balance it out. Well, this crankshaft's already been balanced to a 6.0. And the cool thing about it is that GM made all those bob weights the same. So a 5.3 liter, which is a smaller bore, uh, the 5.7, a little bit bigger, 6.0, a little bit bigger bore, they actually made the pistons all weigh the way they should according to what the bob weight is. So it's approximately 570 grams on each one of those units. So when I put this little mosh of parts together, everything should work because it should weigh about the same. So that's pretty cool. Um, and I think I mentioned before, I got the 241 heads. 241 heads are basically the, the bad boys of the LS series stuff, the old Chevy guys will recognize like a 202 head or a uh, double hump, camel hump heads, the fuel, fuely heads. Those were all really good flowing heads that they had back in the day. Well, this is kind of the same thing. They make tons of different types of heads. The uh, 5.3 truck heads, the 799s are, actually the 799s are pretty good. The um, 862s, 862 was a basic truck head that had a smaller combustion chamber, but it also had a smaller valve that's built for torque. So if you take one of those heads and put a bigger valves in there and port them up a little bit and then they have the smaller combustion chamber, that's how guys are getting more compression out of the out of their engines. And then the old <clears throat> heads that I had, let me get a little picture of those. These are pretty much the crappiest heads. These are the very first ones. They have the old perimeter bolts so all the LS stuff now has bolts down the center. These had bolts all the way around the outside, and some of them stripped. Uh, the flow numbers aren't too bad on these heads, but they're just outdated, old school, and then the fact that I bent some valves, I really didn't want to put any money in these things. Um, I could have got a few valves and straightened it out and hope the guides didn't crack, but, you know, for the amount of money I spent, on these 241s, which was really a good deal on these bad boys, and then I'm going to pick up some power. So I'm just totally stoked. This is going to be this is going to be fun. All right, so back to the block. So the Gen 3, Gen 4, Gen 5, three different revised engines, uh, all basically the same castings and same stuff. Biggest difference on this particular engine, a Gen 4, is that it has the active fuel management, AFM. That's what these pedestals are for. So we had a VLOM, which is a uh, mechanism that went down in here and had solenoids built into it. And you have oil that comes through these holes. That oil travels through the VLOM through some solenoids opening and closing, and that's what directs oil to the uh, different lifters. So they had different style lifters down in the holes there. They had some lifters with springs on there and little pins, and basically when the oil pressure pushes the pin out, it locks these lifters so that you get normal lift. When the oil pressure goes away, when the solenoid closes, pins retract, and you have no lift on that particular valve. So they would kill a cylinder. Obviously this cylinder right here lines up with these. They would kill the cylinder by just completely closing both valves. You have to close both valves so you don't get air in there and have a restriction on the pumping. You know, they could have just shut the injector off, but then you still have air coming in and compressing so you have a little bit of drag on that uh, rotating assembly. So they just, they killed everything. Killed the injectors, killed the valves and that's how that works so I don't need that stuff 
I don't want that stuff because I don't care about gas mileage. I want to go fast. So the uh, fix for that is just simply putting on an LS6 style cover. So this cover right here, as you can see, has little O-rings built into it. And that actually goes right on top of that block, covers all those up, bada bing, bada boom. And that is how we get around that. I could actually tap and plug all those holes also as a extra reinsurance, but I don't know. I'll do a little bit of research on that and see if I need to do that. I don't think I do because that cover is going to seal all that up anyway. I could just actually make a dowel and drive it in there with a little bit of green Loctite, which is a stud type of Loctite, and that would also fix it. So that's the Gen 4, and then the Gen 5 went with variable cam timing. And that's a different style front cover and a different style cam sprocket. And this one didn't come with that, so I don't need to delete that, but it's really easy to do. Just take it off and put a regular cam sprocket on there. Now the Gen 4 did come with a front cam sensor. So there's, there used to be a cam sensor hole back here on the Gen 3s. It would take a reading off the back of the cam. This one doesn't have that. So I had to get a Gen 4 cover, which is this little bad boy, and it has the cam sensor built into the cover. So that's a super easy fix. And then there's a special cam sprocket that has a one tooth reluctor wheel on there. So I could still use my uh, old computer. So I have the old Gen 3 computer, which is a 24 tooth reluctor wheel on the back of the uh, crankshaft. And the cam that I was using before, uh, obviously I can't use because A, I blew it up and <laughs> dented it all up. And B, hold the phone, it has the reluctor wheel built in right back here on the back. So hold on. Technical issue. There we go. So actually right here, these little cutouts is how the cam sensor would work. So it's called a one-time pickup on this one. So the computer seeing one signal on the cam, 24 tooth on the crank, and that's how it determines when it's going to fire. So I can put all that stuff on here. So basically my 1997 technology is working on, this is like a 2010 engine. Uh, everything is going to cross over and fit and bolt on there. So man, that's just so cool. I just, the ingenuity that they did. And then when I found out that the bob weights on all those pistons are all the same, that's just, man, that's some really good thinking on on the engineer so now they only have one crankshaft that they have to worry about so they don't have to have different weights on the crankshaft and different um, part numbers they can just use one crank for all the engines and it's going to work out great so that's where i'm at now getting all the parts for this gathered up which i have and then i can start miking and start putting this bad boy together <laughs>